Prepare your funny bone, because it's about to receive a good tickling. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest Netflix original TV shows. All right, Beatrice, you got a good whiff. Now step away from your father's breakfast before he catches you a sniffin' and gives you a spankin'. Yes, mother. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at Netflix's greatest comedic TV series. While some of these shows venture into dramatic territory, this ranking is based solely on their sense of humor. He's not even looking at me. Uh, cut! All right, let's get the wolf to sit. How about that? Number 10, Mystery Science Theater 3000, The Return. Hold it! I can't keep this up any longer. I don't actually work here. Yeah, they just gave me a jumpsuit and a hat because I'm tall and I look like I know what I'm doing. Oh, rats. Lasting for 10 awesome seasons, Joel Hodgson's Mystery Science Theater 3000 popularized the practice of tearing bad movies to shreds with the aid of two wisecracking sentient robots. As there will always be terrible flicks worth riffing on, a successful Kickstarter campaign led to Netflix and Hodgson reviving the series under the label The Return. The new host, Jonah Ray, is a suitable replacement for Joel Robinson and Mike Nelson, while Felicia Day and Patton Oswalt were born to portray the show's robotic tormentors. With a slew of guest stars including Neil Patrick Harris and Jerry Seinfeld, Mystery Science Theater 3000 does not miss a beat. I'll stay here, thanks, rather than descend into your cave. Seriously, do you live in a cave? Number 9. Grace and Frankie uh, it, sir, can we get some cigarettes over here for crying out loud? After a rocky start, Netflix's thoughtful comedy has gotten better with age. Starring the always charming duo of Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, Grace and Frankie sees the titular characters' lives turned upside down after their husbands decide to marry each other. Bolstered by a fantastic secondary cast and created by Marta Kaufman, Grace and Frankie warmly pokes fun at aging and sexuality, while also serving as a perfect showcase for Fonda and Tomlin's chemistry. Don't you know anything about the labor movement in this country? Guys, where's the coffee? Communist cake is served. While season four opted for a more dramatic tone, Netflix's heartfelt series is the current generation's answer to the Golden Girls. You want me for real? Well, here I am, baby. Number eight, one day at a time. This is my third coat, Jerry. What do we think, over the top or just Cuban? A remake of a CBS sitcom from the 70s and early 80s, Netflix's highly acclaimed series uses humor to comment on timely subjects like citizenship, sexual identity, and mental illness. Led by Justina Machado's Penelope Alvarez, One Day at a Time centers on the everyday challenges faced by a Cuban-American family. Despite the comedy's willingness to explore heavy themes and story arcs, One Day at a Time's earnest nature is simply delightful and infectious. Bridging the gap between old-school family sitcoms and recent single-camera comedies, One Day at a Time is, somehow, simultaneously progressive and timeless. I always knew that was part of the deal. I just... I never expected it from my own father. Number 7. Lady Dynamite <laughs> I feel French! Oh, flowers for me! No thanks! Blurring the line between fact and fiction, Maria Bamford stars as herself in Netflix's surreal, loosely autobiographical comedy. Jumping between multiple timelines, Lady Dynamite sees Bamford trying to rebuild her life after a mental breakdown and being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Created by Arrested Development's Mitch Hurwitz and Hot Rod writer Pam Brady, Lady Dynamite's absurdist and hectic approach mirrors Bamford's free-flowing style of stand-up comedy, with the second season really ramping up the meta humor. I'm cured, I feel it in my gut, and I, I can cure you guys! Well. Yeah, let's have fun with this! While definitely not for everyone, Lady Dynamite is a comedic tour de force that needs to be experienced to be understood. It's not what's in your head, it's what's on it. <laughs> Number 6. Bojack Horseman I don't know why I came here. Yeah, you do. At this point, we're just beating a dead horse. Satirizing the celebrity lifestyle, Bojack Horseman has been lauded for its realistic depiction of addiction, depression, and trauma. It also helps that it's about talking animals, and it happens to be pretty damn funny. As evidenced by Season 3's Fish Out of Water episode, 
BoJack Horseman is the king of visual gags and running jokes, while the cartoon's deft employment of pop culture references is a sight to behold. BoJack's darker elements tend to overwhelm its more comedic touches at times, but Vincent Adultman and Todd Chavez's antics will never fail to entertain. I mean, do you even care about this at all? Sweetie, no! I think this is stupid and a waste of everybody's time, but you're my girlfriend and I care about you, so I'm here. Okay. Number 5. Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt what is your name? Oh, it's Kimmy. Kimmy. Are you good at braiding hair? I'm awesome at it. Intended as an NBC sitcom before being sold to Netflix, Tina Fey's delightfully cartoonish series was among the earlier big comedic hits for the streaming service. Three seasons in, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt has truly found its groove as Netflix's cheerful comedy about a woman who goes back into the real world after being kidnapped by a cult. <laughs> Aided by the instantly likable Ellie Kemper in the titular role, Faye takes full advantage of the network's budget and freedom to ramp up her trademark wacky comedic stylings originally seen in 30 Rock. Odd, irreverent, and featuring an unforgettable theme song, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt is silly in all the right ways. Michael, I'm not playing with Jimmy Ball. Something don't taste right, cause it ain't right. Number 4. Love. I'm Nikki. Nikki, hey, I'm Gus. Nice to meet you. With Trainwreck knocked up and the 40-year-old virgin under his belt, Judd Apatow knows a thing or two about rom-coms. Lasting for three seasons, Love is a quintessential entry in the director's body of work. Offering a grounded exploration of romantic relationships, communities Gillian Jacobs and co-creator Paul Rust portray two polar opposites who might just be perfect for each other. Alongside a ton of cringe, but not forced humor, Love's sizzling banter flows effortlessly from one punchy joke to the next, with Jacobs delivering the performance of a lifetime. Netflix and Apatow really made the most out of Love's relatively cliché premise. How old are you? Why? I don't know. Wait, do I seem like I'm 12 years old right now? or? You're like a 40-year-old, 12-year-old or something. I, I'm a... Number 3. American Vandal Dylan, why am I interviewing you? Because everyone thinks I did it. In 2017, Netflix took a step back and genuinely tried to solve the age-old mystery of who drew the 27 dicks. With all signs pointing towards class clown Dylan Maxwell as the mastermind behind the high school prank, the senior student is promptly charged and expelled. But two students believe there is more to the case of the vandalized cars than first meets the eye. Why wait until the last quarter of Dylan's senior year? Split into eight parts per season, American Vandal is a fictional true crime mockumentary series produced by Funny or Die alumni Dan Peralt and Tony Ascenda that asks viewers to question what they think they know. Yeah, I never forget the ball hairs. It's just, I mean, it's such an important part of the dick. And like the mushroom heads all off. Number two, wet hot American summer, first day of camp. Hey, Mitch, I got an announcement to make. A notorious bomb. 2001's Wet Hot American Summer gained a cult following after most of the movie's cast later developed into Hollywood royalty. 14 years later, Netflix reunited most of the cast, including Bradley Cooper, Amy Poehler, and Paul Rudd, for a hilarious victory lap. A prequel set in the days prior to the events of the film, First Day of Camp embraces and enhances the outrageous absurdity of having actors clearly in their 40s portraying teenagers. With a decent sequel series set 10 years later, Wet Hot American Summer effortlessly parodies summer camp movies while also being an homage to classics of the genre. Oh, oh my goodness. Unexpected. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Finding love, it's all heartbreak and disappointment and misery. Whoa, Bob, you look really old. Well, David, you look really fake old. You see that? That right there, that is a man. That is a stunt man. What was that? Number one, Big Mouth. The uterus is the center of female reproductive activity. The uterus? I thought girls had vaginas. I thought that too. Disgusting, embarrassing, and packed with dick jokes, Big Mouth might just be the most spot-on exploration of puberty ever put to film. The animated series follows Nick and Andrew, voiced by Nick Kroll and John Mulaney respectively, as two seventh graders trying desperately to come to grips with their blooming sexuality. While not afraid to get real, Big Mouth's surreal and outlandish humor delivers countless laugh-out-loud moments. 
from Andrew's dynamic with the foul-mouthed hormone monster to Jay's relationship with his sentient pillow. Big Mouth is not only the funniest Netflix original, but one of the best comedies in recent memory. This is great. Everyone thinks we're just holding hands, when really, we're holding hands. I never want to let go of you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.